Welcome back to the Pearl Hecker Podcast. I'm Adam Vokey. And I'm Nancy Kudrin. And you're probably thinking, what the hell's going on? Where is Moose? Did we they actually, hijack it? Yeah. <laughs> we had a mutiny. We ran Moose out. <laughs> now, actually, this is episode 50, so our guest is Moose Lundstrom. Yes. I'm on the wrong side, everybody. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we got That's him to the other side of the table. So. I have been so excited for this. I'm not going to lie. I have been waiting <laughs> to disappoint you as every woman in my life ever. <laughs> Why would that's good? That's yeah. good. I expect that. Yeah, most people should. Most women, they're like. Does yeah. it feel weird to be over there? It does feel a little weird. I don't, does it? Yeah, I don't know. I don't. Uh, I, I can just tell stories, and I don't have to sit there and play the the. You know. Yeah, we're gonna let this monkey do it. He's yeah. just saying right that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's a lot of flashing little lines and red lights and knobs and. Adam, I have faith. Ooh. <laughs> you at, least, have. at least one of us does. Yeah. <laughs> I'm probably since we're at Rebel Girl, there's probably like some cool saying about having faith in here somewhere. <laughs> I don't know, but we could always get cozy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, or we could keep calm and drink beer. <laughs> yes, that's what we'll do. So, well, <laughs> since we're at Rebel Girl, uh, Dancia, this is your sister's shop. It is. Uh, yeah. You want to tell us a little yeah. bit about it? Yeah. So Rebel Girl is just kind of her little baby, and was created to just kind of give people um, something to do, you know, around here. So people can come in here and craft, and um, they can just come in on their own free time and just drop by, or they can uh, schedule a craft. She has classes you can come to. She sells paints here. She just she does it all, you guys. She does it all. Uh, and she's actually going to be the uh, guest for next week's episode. Yes, so, she is. Which I'm going to kick your ass, Paula. I'm going to kick your <laughs> ass. <laughs> Can I just say my favorite craft in here is directly behind you. And that there's a, You guys can't see it, but there's a throw pillow. You can craft a throw pillow. And this particular one says, does this pillow smell like chloroform? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that great? That's awesome. Uh-huh. There's a sign in the bathroom that says, poop jokes aren't my favorite, but they're a solid number two. <laughs> my husband is like, stop making shit that says words, because it feels like our house is a fortune cookie. <laughs> and I can't stop. I can't stop making stuff that says things. Uh, no, I actually made a cutting board from here. There for you the, go. That's yeah. another thing they it do. Was a, yeah. It was at a, like a Christmas party mm-hmm. for the star. Yep. They had her come in, and we all did craft stuff, and I did a cool little saying on a cutting board says god bless america uh-huh is that a boogie jiggy board or whatever a cutting board <laughs> no this dipshit doesn't know what a charcuterie board well is. actually that's what it is <laughs> can i flip it over put it on the cutting board do side. you know what a charcuterie board is yeah because i made one okay but did you know before that yes i did it's like a big it's an adult lunchable oh my god that's what yes that's what hmm. he was it's told. a fancy word for meat and cheese tray dude. yes i call it a buffet plate. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's like, oh, God dang it. What's that? You guys mean like Golden Corral. <laughs> yeah. Is that what that is? <laughs> you said charcuterie board. I'm like, is that like a sex position board? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what that is, man. That's yeah, and then you spank your salami. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't eat off that fucking board. Yeah, no, it could be fun. Yeah. But welcome to the Bullhooker Podcast. Yep. Mm-hmm. Larry, I am, first of all, this is your baby. Yeah. This is your baby. Can we just start and just, how did you come up with this? I, I guess I, I want to know. Tell everybody. Um, so I love the podcast. There's a guy named Josh Connor who I need to get on this podcast. I pulled up to uh, get gas one day and he pulled up and his wife's in the real estate. And he's, he's one of those guys that always say, I want to do comedy. I'm like, great. It's great. You know, you go to open mic nights for the next 10 years and you'll you know, get some stage time somewhere. I'm sure. And he goes, uh, we should do a podcast. You should podcast. Because we did the uh, Juggernaut Brothers podcast back in the day. Okay. And uh, I said, ah, oh, they're too much work, man. I don't, I don't know. But then what happened? I started thinking about it, right? Because so, uh-huh. Moose needs a hobby. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah I, don't, I don't have enough to do. And uh, this idea came to me. And, and not to be insulting, but I called Adam and said, what do you think? He goes, I really fucking like it. And I go, you didn't <laughs> shit on me. That's great. That's <laughs> Honestly, I was driving through like some big city for work, and I was just like, uh-huh, yep. Right, cool, yeah. Let's uh-huh. do it. No, no, you said the word. I could listen to that. I go, well, holy <laughs> shit, I got the approval from Adam. So, uh, yeah, maybe. And I kind of hit the idea off a few people, and they're like, I really like that idea. And I'm like, well, you know what, maybe I'll give it a shot. So, But you just came up with the idea. Like, you're like, okay, this is what I'm going to, or did you come up with other ideas oh, before you came it, up with yeah, this it, one? It warped into this, because originally I was just going to do a, what was it, like just a, a, oh, it was one, you tell us one story, like a short, short podcast, and we got to see if it's bullshit or not. Just one. Just one. 
okay. right? And you got to see if you're you're lying or if it's a true story. And then I start thinking, well, it'd be kind of fun to hear a couple stories, you know? Mm-hmm. And, you know, I've always said it, and I, I believe this, that one of the biggest gifts I have in life are the people that God put in my life. Because I know some great people. I know some funny, interesting people. I don't know if I'm attracted to them or they're all attracted to me. But mm-hmm. so for some reason, I end up with people in my life that are just funny, interesting people. They, I really do. People that I just, I don't know, it's hard to explain. Like, I love to listen to people's stories. I love yeah, it. Yeah, you know? same. Because people have great stories. And the average person's like, I don't have that great a story. Until you start thinking, you start listening to other people's stories, and you're like, well, something kind of like that happened to me. And then it's just the, the water gates open, man, right? And, I mean, some of the stories, how many stories have we heard on this, all three of us? Yeah. Right. There yeah. You're like, Tons. Yeah, you're like, holy shit, really? And the thing is, is while I'm sitting here listening to someone tell a story, I get the thing, I was like, oh, that reminds me of when. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's so. happened so many times. Like, I think we've all done that. Like, mm-hmm. and that's really where you have a gift is, like, if somebody's saying something, you can relate it to, you know, something you've done or something you've heard or whatever, but without taking away their spotlight. And I... I try to. I don't want to stroke his ego too much, but that is, it's, 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 you've done great. I'm just waiting for the backhand to happen. I know how this and goes. You're I know still how this goes. ugly. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, it's been fun. And as, as your friend, and I, I feel really fortunate that you've let us do this with you. Well, I'm glad you guys come along for the ride, mm-hmm. man. It's fun. It's been a good time. And I, I think this is going to be kicked in overdrive. I think we're all. It's going to be bigger and better. So. And the name, Things. right? Tell us the name has some meaning too. The Bullhucker. It was an old man in Pueblo who uh, used to tell me that, like, you bullhucking me? And I said, maybe. I don't, I don't know what that is. Like, he said, Are you propositioning me, sir? Because, I mean, I need the money. I ain't going to lie to you. You know, the bartending's been kind of slow. But is this going to cost me or do I get paid? Yeah, right. He's no longer with us. So that's why he can't sue me. That's good. I stole your word there. But, so, um, but yeah, it was just an old man I knew in Pueblo. He was always bullhucking. Hey, he's bullhucking, bullhucking. So. That's just the word I thought about, you know. Uh-huh. Although you and your daughter wanted to start doing this while drinking, and we were called the bull drunker, and I thought that's a horrible <laughs> idea. I still think we should do I at th- least one episode. Yeah, I was going to say that needs to be like a special episode. The booze hucker? No, because then all the editing I'll have to do like, oh, Larry, take that spot out too. Oh, Larry. I, I think we should just do a flight in front of us, and we drink it, <clears throat> and then we just bullshit, right? And then as you get to number 10... It just is so funny. Well, then why don't, <laughs> why don't we go all in and do a Facebook Live <laughs> drunk? Okay, now I don't know about that. You can't take that shit back. <laughs> oh, boy. Tell me a story about, you know what I mean? Then yeah. It's, yeah, that's when bad shit happens. Name so. dropping. You lying that. bitch. You didn't say. <laughs> Adam, isn't that the one you said you want to hump? It's like, what are you doing? <laughs> No, it was her sister, Nancy. Yeah. Yeah. Right family, wrong chick. Exactly. <laughs> abort, abort. She's so now that you bring it up, <laughs> or is no, it's, that the it's, word? no, it's Vokey Hot. Vokey Hot. It's Vokey Hot. hot. That's Vokey right. Hot. See, I've learned things. Right. I've learned things yeah. about you guys. We've all been friends for so long, mm. but I still have learned things about you guys. Like I've known you for a while. I didn't know there was a Vokey Hot thing. Okay, Vokey Hot. That, that came to f- 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 what's it? fruition. Fruition. Yeah. There we go. In uh, Yours. Budweiser. Yes, but it was your podcast where I learned this. Oh, yeah, on yeah. my podcast. Yeah, yeah. yeah, my episode. Your, your episode, sorry. Episode 25, if you want right. to know what Vokey Hot is. Yeah. So There's some hot chick walking by, and everybody was like, look at her, and I was like, nah. <laughs> that, bitch needs, yeah. that bitch needs to hit a buffet and call <laughs> me back. That's right, that's right. Speaking of Golden Corral. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Find one, lady. Or Find as one. I call it, the newest dating location. Oh, God. You know, I will say, <clears throat> there's been a lot of great episodes, but when we did your episode and just hearing you guys banter back and forth about your Budweiser days, by far my favorite. Yeah. That was just so funny. So it funny was. to hear the stories of all of that. So It was a collection of just unique people. It really was. It just unique people who just like to torture each other. You know what I mean? It's it just some of the shit that happened. You know what? It, yeah, it's, it, yeah, it's. It's one of my fond memories, that job. So Love it. Yeah. Love but it. Real quick, uh, if you're new to the Bullhucker, go ahead and uh, hit subscribe. It's right? a small click for you and <laughs> a big one for us. Thank you. Hey, hey got it. how'd your girl do? <laughs> I'm, I'm training them so they can get rid of me eventually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. No matter what you listen on, uh, Spotify, Apple Podcast, wherever you're at um what do you do you did it said you I do, do apple. apple right what do you do i do apple yeah also so um but yeah go ahead and subscribe you can rate review tell us we're idiots whatever and we were just um, talking about that because we both listen to them because we listen while we drive um but i feel like youtube i'm missing out by not watching them on youtube well when moose told me he said something about video and this i was like 
when he said something about video, I was like, Ugh, I'm out. <laughs> Because <laughs> this isn't supposed to be broadcast. Do right. I really I'm, need I'm, more dates? I'm, Come on. I'm audio only. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so I was like, oh, I don't know. Dude, why are we doing doing video? It's a podcast. You listen. He's like, no, dude, all the all of them that are going to video now. And sure enough, I mean, every, all the big podcasts out there, a lot of it will. And you know. what you're not looking at, Adam, I can tell about you, is when you laugh, you have a contagious fucking yeah. laugh, dude. There is and I also, when I smile, I look like a fucking crackhead with no teeth. <laughs> yeah, well, so do I. It's partly true. <laughs> but, you know, here's the deal. Like, there's a point where you're laughing. You're not even talking, but I switched the camera back to an edit because you're laughing so hard. I, st- I couldn't. I had to stop <laughs> editing. I started laughing hard because you're all red at the red, and you start falling over. When we, there was a story being told, and you just you said something, and then you laughed at your own joke, hard, <laughs> fucking hard. You laughed. It was laughed. funny. It was yeah. a good joke. Yeah, it was. It was funny, but yeah, it's it, it's it is what it is. And I think YouTube is fun, and people like to watch too. Because mm-hmm. how many times do you listen to a podcast and you Google who the guest was if you don't know just to see what they? Oh write. yeah, all the time. Yeah, because you kind of want to put a face to the the, the voice, mm-hmm. you know. See, and I've gotten to the point now, like other podcasts I listen to, like the one I listen to a lot is the, the Nate Land podcast with Nate Margazzi. So they'll like be doing stuff on there and they're you know they're on youtube so it's i we listen it's like wait i want to see what they're talking about yeah because i'll like put stuff up on the screen or whatever so then i'll go back and listen to the podcast again but watch it so i can see what they're they're doing so anyway we can sit here and talk all night long but let's get with why we're here we got three stories um the first one is dude i'm drunk not homeless (laughs) <laughs> the second one, sometimes shitty roads lead to great places. And the third one is the human meth torch. Ooh. So uh, okay. I'll let you start I'm this always one. I'm going to get a little sidetracked here, I feel like, the whole time. Because I know you love titles. You love when people come up with fun titles. That's the so f- best wh- part of it. How was this for you? Uh, one I really struggled with. It's a story I really wanted to tell. Uh and the title I ended up coming up with, I like. I liked all the titles. but I uh, like them, too. The Human Meth Torch was probably my favorite one to come up with. Okay, that was, you know, sometimes we save the best for last. That is probably my favorite, too. Okay. So okay. I'm not going to do that. So before we start, your story, is it borrowed? Is it made up? Is it, what is it? It's, uh, it's my story. It's, it's uh, partly made up. It's mostly made up, about 25% true. Now, here's what I've done, is I've taken part of the story I've talked about before, and I think you both have heard part of it before. But I haven't told you the whole, I've never told the whole story. So it's about 25% true. Okay. The rest is pretty much bullshit. So, so it's going to be one of those deals like, oh, I've heard this before. It's and there's going to be a detail that's wrong. It's going to a small reference that you're going to recognize. Wait a minute. That's what we're going to be doing, huh? Mm. What's that? Do we do this? That's my thinking well, you, you, pose. You the thinker now? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I'm thinking. And I will tell you this. Uh, I've watched a bunch of these episodes when I edit them. And I know what both of you look for. When looking for a story, so when we fr- no kidding when we first kind started of. this, I was like, look, like I was on CSI, I was like <laughs> listening and like watching body language and all this stuff, and I was killing it. You and come then, over and check pulses. <laughs> yeah, I'm watching the pupils of their eyes, you know, the whole thing. And then since then, like after the first year, we had to like take time off because of COVID and all that stuff. And we came back. Now I just sit there and kind of like zone out and don't really look for all the stuff that I normally did. And just I have sucked story. ass since then. You just, so you get sucked into the story sometimes, you know. Yeah, and it's hard. You, you don't realize you're supposed to be looking for dents in their story. You just yeah. Well, it was like with story. Chloe's stories when she was on here. I was sitting there. I was like, oh shit! I was supposed to be like <laughs> doing something else other than just like I'm listening. On a podcast. Wait a minute. Wake right, up. Right. <laughs> Chloe engaged. Now we just have one. One more. One more. The uh, the spawns to. Oh uh, yeah. The old, yeah. The old capester. My damn family. All right. Um, so do I get a pick? First? I'll let you pick. Thanks, friend. Um, <clears throat> okay, I'm going to go with sometimes shitty roads lead to great places. All right, this is a love story. Aww. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. So, it's almost Valentine's. Uh, originally, I'm from Pueblo, me and my family. Uh, we moved here uh, when I was four or five years old. My grandfather worked for Comanche, the power plant in Pueblo, and he got a job out here at Pawnee. I'm sorry. I got used to having this in front yeah. of me here. A lot of the first time guests do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're <laughs> fucking rookie. So we moved out here. My mom packed me up and we moved out here with my grandparents. That's how we ended up in Morgan County. Now, um, it's a kind of a story about how you never missed what you never had, right? So when we moved out here, it was just my grandparents, my mom, and myself. 
Um, Did your grandparents live in Pueblo? Yes. Okay. My my, both sides of the family are from Pueblo originally. So, but my mom's side of the family uh, now is pretty much the younger generations moved and the older generations died off. So none of them are really there anymore. Dad's side of the family is all there still. So, uh, growing up, I didn't I didn't have him around. I never knew who he was. Right. But and people used to always ask me like. You know about my dad, or they, you know, they'd they'd ask me if it bothered me, and it never did. I never knew what it was like not to have him. You know, I had a grandfather and an uncle Ed who always provided that for me. Who, you know what I mean? I had great role models, and I had an awesome childhood. You know, and I don't ever, I'll never, I don't, I didn't miss him. You know what I mean? He just wasn't in my life. He never I, was when you were little. No, I mean maybe when I was a baby. I oh, think. I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't have him. So, but I, it didn't ever bother me. I didn't. The teachers would ask my mom, and you know, and and. She's like, I don't think it bothers him, you know. So it, it was just never bothered me, you know, until I got a little older. But having him not be around, the Lundstrom family was very loving. I lucked out with the family I ended up with, you know what I mean? And I, I had a great childhood, and they took very good care of me, you know, and I was very loved, you know. So I can never get mad. I don't have those childhood traumas. I mean, the bullying sometimes and the stupid shit you put with the kid. But more than that, I mean, they, they gave me a good life, you know what I mean? So I didn't have to have that, that father figure around. Did your Uncle Ed have kids? <clears throat> He has a daughter, okay. my, my cousin Amanda, who's okay. four years or four months older than me. So okay. we're about the same age, right? Okay. So anyway, but he was always there, you know what I mean? For yeah. Sporting. So I get a little older and I start to wonder, and I, I'll give my mom all the credit in the world. I ended up with the world's best mom. You Love did. you, mom. Um, she never badmouthed my dad. She always just said, when you meet him, you'll form your own opinion. Maybe have your own relationship if you, if you ever get to meet him, right? I said, okay. And that was good enough for me at the time, you know, but you get a little older, you start to wonder. You know oh, what I mean? for sure. I wanted to know where I came from. You know, I wanted to know. People would ask me, like, why do you have a tan? The neighbor <laughs> kids asked me that one time. Dean and David Copley, why do you have a tan? And I go, well, shit, I do have a tan. <laughs> I am darker than the rest of my family. What is that? I'm fucking lucky, I guess, you know? <laughs> so uh, I get to be around 16, 17, and I start to get curious. And for that vacations, old. yeah, yeah. Like I said, my grandfather was the, uh, I thought that man hung the moon, you know? Aww. No, he was my favorite human. He was ornery, dude. And I had a little grandmother, this little Hispanic grandmother who was 4'10". I don't know. She was a midget. <laughs> whatever whatever the legal height is for a, a little person, she was like two inches taller than that. Oh, really? So she's like, I'm not a midget. She'd fight with my mom. She's like, you're kind of a midget, mom. She's like, I'm not a midget. She'd put in the two-inch rule or whatever it is. Oh, that's and my grandfather was just, he was, a, he, was a, he was a trip. You know what I mean? But like I said, always loved me. Always very good to me. Always there for me. So, but I mean... A character, to be sure. You know, the stories of that man could be all day long, too. So, as I get a little older, I start asking. Well, we'd always go to Pueblo for vacations. My great aunt Ruth's house, uh, when she was younger, my grandmother and her bought this house together from my great grandmother, and my aunt Ruth just lives there. That's where, that's like our family house, kind of, right? That's where right. everybody congregates in Pueblo. We'd always go there for the for family reunions, whatever, and I, I'd found dad's number. So I called him at 16, maybe 17. You years just old. looked him up in the phone book? Yeah, I think so. I can't remember. I think so. Okay, yeah. okay. <clears throat> that call goes, hey, you don't know me, but. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I remember the voice on the other line was very shocked. And I said, I'd like to meet you. I don't want anything from you. I just want to meet you. And he goes, okay. Did he know you existed? Of course, yeah. Okay. Yeah, he knew. Um, and I have uncles that are good uncles over there. They used to, when I was a baby, mom said, bring me, like, fruits and toys. and You know what I mean? Because I'd be the third oldest grandchild. There's two billion of us. We're Mexican, so there's, you know, I mean, there's yeah. shit of us now. Yeah. <clears throat> so... I call him and I, we agree we're going to meet on the east side of the Pueblo, uh, the state fair. Cause it's going on, right? And he goes, okay, I'll be there. We pick a time. I tell him I'll be wearing a blue shirt, you know, and some jeans. And, you know, and he goes, okay. So mom and mom, you know, she's like, okay, well, don't get your hopes up because she knows. She knows my dad, you know. Is she nervous? For at least a little bit, mom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I think so. I think yeah. so. My grandma and grandpa were like, just, you know, be, be cool, man. You know, so I, I go there. And I sit in front of the state fair, whatever time we're supposed to meet. And, uh, you know, as, uh, these Hispanic men are walking. And I'm kind of getting like, are you my daddy? I was like, you know, and they're like, puto. I'm like, no, no puto. <laughs> and uh, I, I wait for five hours and he never shows. <gasps> yeah. <clears throat> so I wait there for five hours. I mean, and, and you just kind of make like, ex now, I, at that point, I'd never had rejection in my life. I mean, women, of course. I mean, <laughs> very, <laughs> you know, <laughs> don't gag, bitch. But. <laughs> But I've never had a family member or someone not want me. You know what I mean? So I know like that what's sounds. What's there not to love? <laughs> well, so, 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 yeah. There's plenty. I have a we'll, list going just in we'll, case. We'll talk afterwards. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, he just doesn't show. So uh, after, it was like five hours, I think. You know, I sat oh. there forever. I, I just, I, I didn't understand, you know. 
Your ice cream's melting. Oh. You're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? And I, and I didn't I didn't get it, you know what I mean? So yeah. I maybe he went to the other side, but surely he'd come over here if he didn't see, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I said, Well, okay, you know what I mean? I, and I, I was upset. You know what I mean? Of course I was. How old so are you? Sixteen, seventeen. S- okay. You know? So I go back in and I, I just want to go to the back room where I'm staying. You know what I mean? I don't want to talk and everybody's like, How'd it go? And I'm like, Yeah, Aww. chill. And so Uncle Ed, man, he's I can see it in his eyes. He's going to kick his ass. Because mom yeah. said when they, they were younger, Ed was a drinker. They'd fight on the front. I mean, they, they'd get into it. You know what I mean? Like, they didn't like each other. So he's upset. And so mom, they just let it go. He didn't know. like your dad? No, fuck no. Okay. Uh, they used to call him Black Bart, my father. I don't I don't know the rebel. Anyway. Okay. So it just is what it is. You know, it kind of crushed me. You know what I mean? And well, so, yeah. So it, whatever, you know. So another year and a half later, whatever, I'm graduating high school. My mom sends my grandparents... All this stuff, you know, you're more than welcome. Please, you know, feel free. You're welcome to hear. You know, you're welcome to come. And she sends them all the stuff uh, in the newspaper. Like, I was the prom king, the senior class president, all that stuff. You know, like, he's not a bad kid, you know. Right. So, and she tells me, don't get your hopes up. (laughs) You know, they might show Larry. And I go, oh, okay. You know what I mean? What do I do? I get my hopes up, you know. Yeah. And I tell, like, Mac and CJ, my two best friends. They don't know how to react to this. They don't know, you know, what to say to this. They're just like, uh, I hope so, man. That'd be cool, you know. So graduation comes and goes, you know what I mean? And as you're walking to that field, you're, you're just waiting for someone to approach you, you know what I mean, and have this weird moment. He doesn't show that either. <clears throat> is what it is. <laughs> this is hey. Jim's is about to cry, dude. Oh, I feel so bad for <laughs> young Larry. Shitty, shitty roads lead to great places, all right? So... I moved to Pueblo to go to school, but I get a job bartending, so that's way more fun. So screw school, right? And I lived at my it was, uh When I first moved to Pueblo, she had that back room, had its own entrance and stuff. So I kind of, you know, I, I rented that from her for a while. <coughs> and uh, it was a Christmas time, around Christmas time, and so I started getting curious again. Like, you know, I, I always said to myself, I want to know who he is. If I ever had kids, I don't want them to be like, tell me about my grandfather. I'm like, Can I ask your grandmother. You know, I don't know. <laughs> so I. Uh, I ask for my grandparents, and my mom gives me their, you know, it's Lila and John Barrows. They live in the bad part of Pueblo. It's called Dog Patch. But they were one of the first houses out there, you know. It's like when people, like when cars in Pueblo get stolen. <laughs> That's and, the first place they And they're they like, look. police are looking. I'm like, where are they look? Go to Dog Patch. It's on cinder blocks <laughs> on fire right now. No stereo, you know. And you will find three more. <laughs> right, right, yeah. right, right. Just start taking VIN numbers. You'll, you'll fill a bunch of insurance claims today. It's so... I, I go the one time, two times. Nobody answers the door. Nobody's there. And they're also in a corner lot. That's important. So I, I, I tell myself one more time, Larry, you know. And I try and play the tough guy like it doesn't bother me. It does bother me. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like, what's going on? So the one time I go up and, you know, I knock on the door and no answer. I'm like, well, I guess that is what it is, Larry. It is what it is, right? And as I'm walking, I see a car pull up behind the house to the garage. So I, okay. So I kind of walk around, you know, and this old woman gets out. And I go, hello, ma'am. And she, and she, and I, I haven't asked her this day. She reaches in her purse and she's a like, hello. And I, I don't, I, I don't know if she had a Glock, <laughs> some mace, you know. You ain't taking my cars, are you? One eight seven, bitch, you know. <laughs> and she goes, yeah. Can I help you? I said, I'm looking for Leela Barrows. She's like, I'm Leela. I said, I'm, I'm your grandson, you know. And she starts crying, just loses it, right? So she invites me in the house, and the house has just got pictures everywhere of everything, you know, and. She's like, this is this, this is this person, this is this person. And, and, you know, this is a lot to take in, right? Yeah. Side note, side funny note. Uh, she's like, this is your cousin, Amy. Amy and I had worked at that nightclub together for about two years, not knowing we're first cousins. No. Thank God I'm bad with women. Because yeah. otherwise. <laughs> oh, God. Amy, I would have hooked up. be I'll so like, awkward. Yeah, yeah. And so. She didn't know either, though. She knew I existed. But, but she, no, Amy didn't know. No, Amy had no clue we were cousins, you know. So I, 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 I stay for like an hour, you know? Yeah. And I just kind of ask about him. And she's, she's, she's his mother. She's going to protect him. You know what I mean? Right. I'm someone who just showed up, you know? That's a grandson, but, you know. So she goes, well, Christmas is coming up, and your Aunt Marge lives literally a block away in that corner house over there. You're more than welcome to join us. And I said, well, okay. That sounds okay. You know, how nervous, right? So I, uh, I said, okay, all right. So I, I take her up on it, right? Yeah, and also they owe you 18 <laughs> years of Christmas presents. Right. You're right. going. That's what I said. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Two Christmases. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I pull up to the house, you know, and there's these two kids playing, and I tell them, hey, is this the Barrow's house? He goes, yeah. 
Leo borrows here. He goes, yeah. You want to go get her? Or can I come in? You know, this little boy turned out to be my, my only brother, my youngest brother, John. He's 14 years younger than me. So uh, he goes in the house, and out comes this woman who's the other angel of my life, Christy, my stepmom. She's all, my name's Christy. I'm your stepmom. You know, come in. Come in. How are you? You know, she couldn't be nicer. And to this day, she couldn't be nicer. I love her, you know. Aww. She's mom, too. She brings me in, and it's a Mexican family, so I'm going to round off to 3.5 million people in this fucking house. <laughs> Right. <laughs> yes. Drinking and four and, stolen cars. Right, right. On cinder blocks. You yes. Know? She leads me around the house. You know, what I mean, she's introducing me, and they all know I exist. They all know who I am, and I do resemble and sound like my dad. You know, and it's kind of freaking people out that I'm there. You know, not bad. They're all they're all polite. You know what I mean? So, I, uh, I get the point. I said, uh, so is my dad here? And she's like, he got called into work. I go, all right. You know. I, I see, you know, once again, I say, yeah, fuck it. It is what it is, right? She can't be nicer, though. You know what I mean? She's like, you just, you come by for wherever you want. If they don't like it, Christy's a white lady, and they're a Mexican family, so they were shitty to her at first. So she has this attitude. I'm like, if they if they mess with you, fuck them. You tell me. Oh. You know what I mean? So, like, yeah, she's So you're kind of more in than she is, because you kind of have a tan at this right, point. Right, right. Why do you have a tan, Larry? Because uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm your cousin, you idiot. So... I'm like, you know, okay. At, at this point, I'm like, you know what? Fuck him. You yeah, know I mean? yeah. Maybe it's his loss, right? So it's probably four, three, four months later. I'm driving to McDonald's to get a burger, you know, because I'm hungry and hungover. And I see this car whip up next to me. It's Christy. She goes, hey, how are you? I go, good. She's all, she gave me some address. Like, what's that? She's like, that's our house. He's home right now. Go. He's home right now. Go. I go, what? Your dad's home right now. Blah, 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 Michigan Street. <laughs> Okay. No. Yeah, I don't know. Should I? You go? got some cojones, my friend. I, I I don't know what to do. I'm like, I have no. I was gonna call someone. Like, should I go? Like, fuck it, I'll go. You Are know? you kind of pissed or like, what is your feelings? I don't know. I don't know how to feel about it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't want to know. Like, what the hell? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I go. I pull up, and she goes, "We didn't talk." You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> she doesn't want to be in the middle of it. Oh, this girl you know? is a girl boss. I love her. Yeah, she's she's amazing. <laughs> you were amazing, Christy mom. So, uh, so I pull up the house, knock on the door, you know, he answers. I said, Larry borrows. And he goes, yeah, I'm, I'm your son, Larry. His name's Larry. Yeah. I'm Larry Jr. You didn't know I was a junior? No. Yeah. Mom was going to name me Lars and she picked, decided to go Larry Jr. Thanks a lot, mom. Lars would have been amazing. <laughs> yeah. Lars, Lars would have been a badass. Lars name, is bro. a badass. I gotta lie. No, but I'm Larry. It's the worst. Anyway, he answers the door and I said, you know, I, I'm your son. It's nice to finally meet you. And you know what I mean? And he's like, come in. You know what I mean? And we sat on the chairs, and this is the, it was the most awkward moment of my life ever. You know what I mean? Because he, he is just blindsided by me showing up. You know what I mean? And I don't know what to say to him. You know? Is, it, so, is, it, is there any talking or just Yeah, we, we played video games. He goes, like, video games? We just kind of bullshit a while. I said, well, I'm going to get going, you know. <sighs> nice to meet you. And uh, I, called, I went home and called mom and said, well, I met my dad. And she's like, asshole, right? Because she held off on that for 24 <laughs> years to call him an asshole. You're 24 when this happened? 24 years old, yep. So, uh, and that's, it, it, it's been a shitty road to this point. You know what I mean? It's it been a lot of kind of mental, mentally beat me up at times, you know? Oh, uh, yeah. So, I, uh. He goes, well, he called me. He called me like a week later. He's like, would you like to come by? And I said, okay. And that's when Tiffany and John were there, and they were little, you know what I mean? So, because he was born in 89, she's born in 90, you know, so I'd have been a freshman in high school. He's like, Christy and I go to the store. Would you hang out with them for a little bit? I go, sure. They wanted me to. <laughs> they just needed a babysitter. Yeah, maybe yeah. so. Maybe so, you know, because he had told them, like, you have an older brother you didn't know about, you know what I mean? And I have two stepbrothers from Christy's had from a previous marriage. Sure. So they came back and we hung out and she made dinner. And then that's where the, the made the great places ended up. Uh, to this day, we have a very good relationship. You know, I, uh, I forgave him. You know, I mean, did he do the right thing? No, he didn't. But he's family. You know, I hear from him every holiday, every birthday, every everything. He calls, you know, he gives a shit. I think he, I know he, he generally gives a shit. You know what I mean? So he's came to brush before. You know, he's in the park with his new girlfriend. They, they, him and Christy got divorced, you know what I mean? Because oh. I don't know why he'd leave her anyway. Um, 
He's like, I'm, I'm in the, you guys have a nice park here. Is it free? I'm like, no, don't tell people you're my father if you're, you're squatting there, you know? <laughs> I'm on the city council, man. But we do, we have a, we have a great relationship, you know, and I've grown to love him, you know, and, you know. It's, have you ever had, like, an honest conversation with him? Like, hey. A, a little bit, you know. And, and he, he is there reasons? He was scared. You didn't know what I wanted. He didn't, and he's apologized, you know, and he said, I'm sorry. You know, I didn't know, I didn't know what you want. My grandfather on that side, who I, pff, not a fan of. Told him, don't bring that boy into this house. Don't bring him into this family. It'll be trouble. He'll probably bring trouble, you know. So I, and him and his dad were close. Like when that grandfather passed away, uh, they called and told me. And I, I called dad to make sure he was okay. I didn't, the grandfather passing. <laughs> My grandfather passed away. Uh, Lundstrom mm -hmm. was already gone. That's the one that I cared about. But uh, we, we ended up with a great relationship. We have one to this day. You know what I mean? So How does your mom feel about this? She's Her and Christy <coughs> get along really well. You know oh, I mean? good. Well, Densia, wouldn't you want the woman that's being good to your son? You'd be good to her, right? Yeah, I mean, I feel like as a divorced person and not, not, not near thing, nothing nearly as bad as what you, but also as a mom, um, there comes a sense of like having to share your kids with somebody that you, you become very protective of right. them you know you you yeah. too you, you're divorced and to share your kids and let alone if that person hadn't been in their life and then they are and then there's another woman like i just i think i would want to be that person but also i think there'd be a sense of protective and also like really he's my you know what i mean right, right. like so and this props to your mom because it sounds like from the beginning she's done the right thing and she did i mean and she knows She's pr she's number one. You know what I mean? She'll uh, always yes. she'll always take presidents over anybody. You know what I mean? Like, like that. But uh, she did. She never badmouthed him. She never. Yeah, and I know she hated him for a long time. You know what I mean? Rightfully but, so. But she loved her son more. So. Oh. Yeah. So shitty places or shitty roads sometimes lead to great places. You know what I mean? So. Wow. Uh, you know, I will say this for for your mom and your family and everything that you've talked about. I, I tell this joke. Um, <clears throat> one of my kids. What was it? One of their friends is is an only child, and just she's not a very good friend. She's kind of a asshole. And I jokingly tell my kids, don't ever have an only child. <laughs> only children are weird and they're kind of selfish. And I had like joking and I said, the only child I've ever met that I liked is Larry. <laughs> 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 you know, and there are, right. uh, okay, if you're an only child, please don't take that serious. But um, well, the, obviously your your parents, your mom yeah. did something. And right. my grandparents. And you your know. grandparents, yes. T it takes a village. Right, because like I said, mom had to work, you know, a lot because mm -hmm. she had to raise me. But my grandmother was a, was a housewife growing up, so that's who I stayed with all the time. You know, mm -hmm. you know she kind of raised me. You know, I've been beat by a four-foot Mexican more than I cared to know. I didn't care to mention. <laughs> you know what I mean? When a four-foot, when Mexican women walk in, I'm very respectful because I know they'll punch you in the mouth. They don't. Swing, yeah. swing in the Bible. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, has your dad always been as respectful about your mom? Yeah. No, he's never oh, bad good. mouthed her. You good. know what I mean? Anything like that. So. Because I bet that would really bring out that. Right. And, and what's tough for him is he had to sit there as I brought him pictures and explain to him about my life. You know, and like, this is Mac. He was my best friend. We grew up next door to you. When I was fifth grade, he moved in and I told him stories about me. You know what I mean? So he had to sit there and listen to stories about his son that he didn't know. You know what I mean? Wow. About a stranger. You that know? would be rough if i was yes. like in his situation and i had a son and then they came and like started filling me in on what i had missed i mean that would be yeah that would be hard a to lot listen of regret to. right oh tons yeah yeah and maybe that's kind of the price he pays you know what i mean because did he do the right thing yeah Essentially, no, you know are you still are you friendly with your um half siblings still oh yeah oh yeah we get along very well so. do you ever have remorse that they got had them in his life their lives the whole time like what well, i was Mid twenties, a little bit, you know, because Jesse and Chris were Christy, and he obviously raised them, you know. And I have, I, I lied to you. There's actually another Crystal, who was my half sister, um, who's a couple months younger than me. That's she's the reason that mom and dad, yeah, he got so much pregnant. Oh. And mom's like, peace out, you know. I what was mean? gonna so, ask, but I didn't yeah, know. Yeah, so he was busy. Yeah, uh, that, that's a hope, man. So yes, um, you know, but you know, he's also one. Of the, he's the one person on the planet that actually can make me laugh without trying. Because some of the shit he does, there's Voki crazy, and then what's what's Lynette? What's her what's her maiden name? Deloach. Deloach. There's Deloach crazy. Families have their own type of crazy, right? Oh, there's yeah. Hall crazy, right? Yeah. What, what was Diane before a Hall? Uh, Williams. Uh, there's yeah, Williams crazy. Yeah. <laughs> but you're used to that crazy, right? Right. That's crazy that you understand. It's not crazy to you, but it's fucking crazy. You know? mm -hmm. oh, yeah, there's tons of crazy on the Vokey side. I had yeah. an aunt, or a great aunt, that when she would come to visit my grandma, 
she would sleep under the kitchen table because she was afraid they wouldn't wake her up for breakfast. Right. <laughs> and it was, it was, you know, that's Vokey normal. So <laughs> but when I went to go. That's my hero. Girl just wants to eat. Right. But it borrows crazy. I wasn't used to. So some of the shit he would tell me, I'm just like, wow. What the heck? Alan Goff. What's up, Al? It's his bucket list to meet my father. Because I could tell you stories about him. He, he's, he's a character. You know what I mean? But he's, he's a good man. He really is. You know what I mean? He just. Has he ever been to a show? I've never had one around to where he could be no, okay. you know, close enough to be to a show. So he always talks about it. He brags to people about it. You know what I mean? So, yeah, he, you know, and they, they're very good to me. So I need to I, I need to come to Pueblo and see you guys. I haven't been there. So shame on me. But it's, uh, you know, that's a crazy thing. But I didn't know it was a big thing growing up without a father. I didn't. I had no idea. Is wow. that, are those important? I don't know. You know, <laughs> uh, CJ's uh, dad, Willie Jones. What's up, Willie Jones? Uh, whenever like the the comic movies or whatever the sci fi movies that come out, he'd always take us. You know, oh. CJ's dad's gonna take us. I, I didn't think anything of it. You know, my grandfather was gonna go to the movies. He wasn't into that shit. But um, yeah, I love when I see that like people that are missing, like mom, dad, whatever, and other people just step up yeah. and just do that stuff with them. You know right. what I mean? Just like go to football practice or whatever that is. Like those people are heroes. Right. Right, mm-hmm. and I had a lot of those people in my life, and I, I didn't even appreciate it at the time. I didn't realize they were going out of their way. I just thought people, this is nice, you know. People must want to hang out with me. I don't know. They get invited everywhere, but that's why they just. You know, I was just thinking, is that this is a hell of a story? Like in everything that's happened, I feel like I saw it when I used to watch Young and the Restless. So you son of a bitch, if this is a from a soap <laughs> opera and you stole it and you almost had me in tears. I will sucker punch you. <laughs> <laughs> if your dad was actually paid by Stefano yeah. from Days. <laughs> and he's been in your life the whole damn time. Yeah. And, and I, your sister <laughs> was crazy ass Sammy. Yeah. And you <laughs> I felt my heart melt for nothing. Mm. You cold hearted snake. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a good tactic though, then, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you asshole. Oh, wow. All right. I did not know that. That was, I, I, lo- I love that story. How have we been friends? Did you know this? Have I you heard this? Knew, I've heard parts of it. Okay. Bits and pieces. So. That's enough to reference, right? Yep. It's just one of those things where, like, yeah, I've heard him talk about, like, working at your, with your cousin at the, right. the bar and, right. and stuff like that. And how old you were when you met your dad. Like, you know, so I've right. heard bits and pieces, just not all of it. There was a point Together. in time where I came to the house. My dad's a hell of a mechanic. I'll give him that. The guy's a gearhead. He can fix anything. He bought a little pickup. He fixed it up. He was going to sell it. You know what I mean? He, uh, he, he goes, come check it out. Come check it out. Because they'd stop by the house. And I walked back there. It's nice. It's, it's nice white. It's an old pickup. It's not great. But he fixed it all up. I go, he goes, I painted it. I go, yeah, it looks good. The paint job looks good. I go, where'd you paint it? Because Chris worked for, uh, what? It's, it's, a, it's a, like a company that does cheap paint jobs. And people learn Mako. How to, Mako. Thank you. You know. Yeah. So, <laughs> Barrett Wilson. Or, but Barrett he, Jackson. Okay. Um, yeah. I go, Dude, where'd you paint it? At, at, at Mako? Or whatever. He goes, no, I, I painted it back here. I go, you painted it in the backyard? He goes, yeah. I go, well, how the hell did you do that? He reaches in the bed. He pulls out a spray case. I said, what happens if it rains and the paint comes off? He's like, all sales are final, bro. It's that kind of shit, you know? I'm like, that makes sense, you know what I mean? So I love it. Yeah. He's a was trip. that story hard for you to tell? Was it yeah, like, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, a little was, bit. Yeah. That's so personal. Yeah, it is a personal story. I, yeah. I, I thought about not telling that one at all. So. No, I love that you got kind of deep with it. I yeah. think that's great. And it, everybody's so used to seeing you being funny and whatever. Like, that takes a, trying to be a funny. soft side. Yeah. And yeah, if serious, it's a Larry. soap opera. <laughs> it's a bummer. <laughs> I'll bummer. never forgive you if it's from the young and the restless and you stole it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm going to go with dude, I'm drunk, not homeless. All right, dude, I'm drunk, not homeless. So I told you I worked at a bar in Pueblo. This story is with my buddy Andy Mijito. I always call him Hito. We all call him Hito. He calls me Hito, but we all call him Hito. Um, so at the bar, there's a guy, old guy named Butch, this old cop. He is actually still a cop. He's on the verge of retirement. And his wife had passed. I'm not sure what happened to his wife. We never asked. But Butch got to the point where he just come to the club and hang out all the time. You know, he just would hang out with us. And we kind of accepted him as one of our own. <laughs> so after hours, I mean, literally, we were all in our early 20s but at that bar. And we all hung out all the time. We talked about Budweiser stories or stories about work. Working at that nightclub is one of the funnest memories of my life. And love one of the, it. It's like my college almost. You know what I mean? 
How so, long did you work there? Started there in 96, got left in 2002. Oh. Right. So, I... Uh, he was the senior bartender. I actually was. <laughs> I had to do the schedule and everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. I worked the ladies bar. You were like the Woody Harrelson yeah. of Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it was a busy, it was a huge nightclub, very busy. Uh, but Butch would always hang out. We got to the point where we'd invite him after hours with us. You know, we'd always go somewhere after hours and drink till the damn morning. You know what I mean? And uh, the daylight come out like vampires. <laughs> like, God damn. Butch was such a good dude, right? And people get high in from him. He didn't care. I'm not on duty, he'd say. And he'd laugh. He just, I think he liked hanging out with us. He just liked having that camaraderie yeah. with somebody, you know? He had season Bronco tickets, right? And he'd always go to the games. But we had like a Buccaneers fan, a Jets fan. We had a Bears fan, whatever. So whenever someone's team would come to town, Butch would always tip them the tickets. Have a good time. Wow. Yeah, he was very cool about it. Well, he tipped me tickets one time for the Redskins. I'm a Bronco fan, so I didn't give a shit what game. Yeah. I'd been to one game my uncle took me to when I was like 12. You know what I mean? So I was so excited. I was like, fucking Bronco tickets, right? And Andy, my good friend, who's a huge Bronco fan, had never been to a game. I'm like, dude, we'll go. You and me, we'll go to this Bronco game. He's like, okay. So I said, I got the tickets. I have my neon. I just got a, a new Dodge neon. Those pieces of shit cars. <laughs> this forest green. <laughs> right? Yeah. It's the one my I drove. My sister it. had one of those. Were you a Budweiser when I drove it? I had the Explorer. No, you, saw, you had the Explorer okay. when I started there. I traded that in for the Explorer. Anyway, this was is such a piece of Good shit. Good trade. Yeah, it wouldn't lock. I mean, all kinds. Of, like one door, <laughs> I just could keep nothing in this car because people rob it so it was actually turned out better because they could just open the damn door and just search through my shit and realize there's nothing here to steal right <laughs> anyway so i tell andy i'll drive we'll get a hotel room you know what i mean we'll, we'll make a night we'll have a good time you know so we he, we get a hotel that one off spear it's a ramada inn now do you know what i'm Ooh, talking about real classy yes yeah, yes, it, yes it yes. was a name brand hotel it that's big for be, us because yeah. we're broke is it still I, my, I don't know what it is now i know which one yeah, yeah. so we get a hotel at the ramada and it's like right south no oh, i'm sorry north of the of uh, is Vesco because this is early two th- or late 2001, right? 9 11 had just happened, mm-hmm. so we have a little small bar in this hotel room because we're gonna mm-hmm. we're gonna get down. Like you've seen Nighttime Larry, but you didn't see Nighttime Larry in his prime. <laughs> right <laughs> enough, like when I could drink, you know. So Andy and I get in this room, we start drinking, man. Like noon, we're just getting shitty, dude. We go down the stadium. We're we're trying to hide booze, but. 9-11 just happens. The security right. is like getting into the White House. You know what I mean? yeah. <laughs> like, but the guy's like, you can't bring that in here. So we just... Slam it. Right. We're on the first tier of uh, Invesco, but like pretty close. It, they're pretty good seats, you know, but it's snowing the whole time. It's cold oh as shit. So people start leaving, right? Because Denver's losing this game, you know, and people are like, screw this shit. So me and Andy sneak down. We think we're all, you know, sneaky, sneaky, but the stadium's half full at this point. They don't give a shit where we're sitting, you know? <laughs> Go to the field. Yeah. That's how we're pretty <laughs> much on there. Bitch. Yeah. yeah. We were right on the end zone. It was awesome. Game's over. Andy's like, let's go down to Lodo. Let's go. Let's go do this, man. I'm like, all right, man. Let's go. You know, we're, we're We've been drinking all day. Yeah, man. Yeah. I mean, fucking champions, right? Yeah. We're fucking prof- trained professionals. So we go down to Lodo. Fun fact about Andy, loves strippers. You know, who doesn't? You know, Carrie's got Jack Ball Johnny who yeah. loves drugs. <laughs> Andy Hito loves fucking strippers, man, right? So we're at a sports bar and we're drinking. He's like, let's go, let's go get some strippers, or let's go see some strippers. You know, let's go to a strip club. And I'm like, all right, you know? Yeah. So I said, I, I said, I know there's one in town that if you bring like your Bronco stub on Sunday after the game, you get it for free. So we don't have to pay a cover, right? And he's like, yeah, which one? I go, I don't know. The Diamond Cabaret is pretty close. Are you familiar? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You, are you, Adam? Oh, yeah. I, I know what it is. I've never been there. It's the nicest strip club in Colorado. Right. Yeah, it is. Like, I wanted you to go to the skanky one. Oh, the <laughs> Shotgun Willies. So with the one even Saturdays, worse Saturdays, Saturdays, man. Yeah. <laughs> that's where my jam usually was, but we were low down. That's way, way down. Uh, okay. Uh, Colfax. So we walk in, and there's this huge son of a bitch there. The bouncer are like, hey, man, is this the place where we get, you know, free coverage? He's like, no, man, that's Shotgun Willies. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, shit. But we got our Bronco stuff on. I got my Trevor Price you know, jersey on, you know. And uh, you right? Yeah. I'm good. Okay. Um, I got my jersey on. I'm like, well, fuck, we're here. And Andy already sees. And there's not an ugly stripper there. They're all, they're all tens. They're all just dropping yeah. gorgeous. And plus, they got the good shift. Right. It's nighttime. Right. This right. isn't three o'clock. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. But, but <laughs> the prime. But it is yeah. a Sunday, right? But the bouncer goes, "You guys at the Bronco game?" I go, "Yeah." He goes, "Well, there's some Broncos here tonight." I go, "Who's here?" He's like. I just know they're Broncos, dude. I don't watch football. I go, oh, shit. Just then, Al Wilson walks in front of us. Al Wilson's my second favorite Bronco of all time. 
right? Second favorite of all fucking time. Just has boobies in his face. No, he's got like three okay. black guys. They're just <laughs> okay. walking around, right? Okay. They're making the rounds. And he bumps me and goes, check it out. It's John Mobley. And I go, uh, and I look at him and, and Al Wilson hears him say it. You know what I mean? And it's possibly the most racist thing that's came out of us ever. You know what I mean? Because like, they all look alike. No, they look nothing alike. You know who John Mobley is? Yeah. He was a linebacker. Right. Number 51. Tall. I mean, just slender guy. Al Wilson's built like a bulldog. You know? Okay. He's just this thick, meaty fucker. So he, he he says, you know, and I'm like, I know who you are. I love you, Al. <laughs> I love Al Wilson. Don't listen to my friends. So we go in, right? And this is a super nice. That's all businessmen and Broncos. We have dollar bills. <laughs> 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 right? So we sit down, but Andy keeps smiling at Al Wilson. Right? Nothing ever comes of this, but you can see Al Wilson's getting irritated. Like, Andy, I think hitting on him, I don't know what he's doing. But I'm like, dude. Because <laughs> I want to go say something to Al Wilson, like, I love you, dude. But, you know, he's got boobs in his face, so he's like, hey, yeah. fat boy, <laughs> beat it, you know? So I don't even try. So I tell Andy, let's get the fuck out of here, you know what I mean, before you piss this guy off. And cause he's going to kick our ass. Even if the three guys he's with couldn't help him, he's going to kick our ass, you know? <laughs> we don't want to put him on nine news for beating up some dude <laughs> right, at right, the strip club. Right. <laughs> so I'm like, let's go, let's go. Back to the sports bar we were at. It's like a, kind of an old Chicago's type, but it's like one of those local ones. Right. I can't even the name of it. So we go back there, and Andy does have an amazing knack with women. He is just amazing with women. Because he spends a lot of time with strippers. He Whatever knows it what is. a girl wants. He does, you know, and he's got <laughs> me with bills. him. You know what I mean? If Andy's a speedboat, I'm the anchor. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so we, get, we go to the sports bar. Somehow we end up at the table with like four girls. Pretty good looking women. And Andy's hitting it off. And I'm trying to be funny. And they're like, oh, your friend's funny. But that's as far as that goes, right? <laughs> so it's probably 10 o'clock at night. Gosh, darn it. 10 o'clock at night. And I'm like, we need to get back because I am I, I feel it coming, dude. Yeah. I'm going to pass out. I'm going to go night night on your ass. <laughs> yeah. So we, they got to go. They're, they're taking off. But Andy's talking to the one. You know what I mean? And I don't know if they're exchanging phone numbers. Or I have a cricket phone at the time, right? <laughs> Are you familiar with cricket? I know, I know cricket. So cricket at that time wouldn't go outside of Pueblo. So I don't have a cell phone. I mean, I, technically I do. I can yeah. pull up contacts or whatever, but I can't make a phone call, you know? And it's a flip phone, right? It's a piece of shit. So Andy's uh. talking to this girl. He's hitting it off. And I'm like, this guy, you know? So we call a cab. We get back to the hotel where the bar is with us, right? We come in. I throw my stuff on the, the table, the little TV table. Well, he just empty my and start cracking a beer open, you know? Him and I sit down start laughing, knock at the door. Answer, it's that girl, right? Just her, though. No friends. Comes in and he's like, hey, "How are you doing?" They're playing it off, and I'm like, "Yeah, what's going on?" You know, and right. and they're talking. All of a sudden, they start making out. They just <laughs> on the bed start making out. <laughs> the popcorn. An- the yeah. anchor just became the third wheel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not even because here's what happened. So I get a little pissed, right? Because then my adrenaline. Because I'm like, you know me, I get like. A, I grab my wallet. I grab my jacket. Because <coughs> I'm gonna go have a cigarette. Because I was a smoker at the time. Yeah. And I tell him, I'm gonna go down and get a pop because he gives me the look like. You know, I'm like, I'm going to Andy, piece of shit. So and I'm, fun. and I'm drunk. I'm drunk. So I say, fine. I grab my jacket, my wallet, and I go down. There's a, because at that, uh, on Spear, there's a, a convenience store just right across, mm-hmm. like right next to it, actually. Yeah. So I walk down there. I get a pop. I come back to the hotel because they have like the little area where the, they have like a huge fireplace, right? Right. And then uh, all this furniture. And I said, I'm going to give him 45 minutes. And then I'm going to go up there. It's pretty generous. And I'm going to go <laughs> to bed. <laughs> I don't care if you're mid-hump. I'm going <laughs> to pass out right there. And I don't care if you use me as a prop. I don't give a shit. <laughs> I'm going to pass out. Right? So I'm drinking my soda. Next thing you know, I pass out. Oh, shit. On that couch in the lobby. <laughs> I'm there for probably an hour, hour and a half. I don't even know what time it was. I get woken up by the manager and one of the girls who work there. They're like, dude, you can't sleep here. Where Are, are you a guest here? I said, yes. What room? I go to grab my key, you know, my wallet, my key, and tell them I'm, I'm a guest here. I had left the key in the room. Oh, shit. Right? Because I'm the one that opened the door to get us in. Yeah. I'm like, uh, I'm on the second floor, and I start to, I'm not probably slurring my words. You know what I mean? Like, nighttime Laird is finest. And you've pissed yourself. No, I haven't pissed myself. <laughs> it's coming, though. So I, I tell them, you know, hey, I, I'm here. I'm here. They go, what's the room under? And I tell them, Andreas Duran. They're like, there's no Duran here. I go, I assure you there is. And at first I kind of look around like, I'm in the right hotel. hotel. <laughs> I am. And I'm like, it's, it's got to be. And I give him my name. He's like, no, Andy didn't have a credit card. Neither did I at the time. 
So of Andy, course. Well, of course not. So Andy, what happened was his mom let him borrow her card, and he was just <laughs> going to pay her for the room. I don't know his mom's name. You know what I mean? Yeah. I didn't know that was happening. Mrs. Duran. Right. So, <laughs> so I tell him, listen here, call the room, and they go, what room? I go, I don't. If we go up there, I can probably show you. Go through you your just, twos until you get there. And they're like, we, you, no, you got to go. You got to go. And I'm like, I promise you. And I'm, at this point, I'm getting like a little worried. It's snowing cold outside. God. Right? So I tell them, come on. And finally, they say, listen, man, we got to call the police, sir. You could not stay here. <laughs> Fuck. So I go walk around the hotel because I don't want them to see what car I'm going to because I'm going to have to drive somewhere. Right? Oh, gosh. I don't have my keys either. <laughs> but the car won't lock. The back passenger door won't oh, lock. So I can, luck. I can break into my car. I have some clothes in the trunk, like some basketball shorts and a few T-shirts. So I bundle <laughs> up, dude. I bundle up and I sleep in that car. It's cold as no. shit. I wake up at like 10. Right, it's daytime because it's probably three in the morning at this point. I wake up and I'm pissed off. I am fucking angry. And so I, I kind of, I kind of just sneak in and kind of go around. You know what I mean? Knocking on the door and I got the right door. And Andy answers like, "Where the fuck you been?" I'm like, "Dude, I wanted to hit him so bad." I'm like, "You motherfucker! <laughs> oh. How was the ass, Andy? <laughs> Sleeping in the car sucked, you know." <laughs> so that's. I am not pitching for this room. Oh, I was, no, I <laughs> did not want to, man, but. He told me what a great night he has, and I, we literally didn't talk all the way back to Pueblo. I was so pissed off at him, and I was just like, a little jealous. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a know? lot of jealous, A little right? jealous, yeah. Um, Troy, the one we talked about, my friend, the DJ, mm-hmm. is that, that's the one that Andy, he let Andy on the money at the strip club we went to. Like, you can't give Andy money to the strip club, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like giving an alcoholic a drink at a bar. It's right, going to yeah, turn out bad. Right, happen. We didn't talk all the way back, man, to the bar, man. I, dude, it fucking sucked, because I thought... They're going to call the cops. I'm going to go to jail. We don't, I don't have money for bail. I'm breaking myself with this whole little trip. This is my vacation for the next three years. You know what I mean? So, yeah, we didn't talk all the way back in the home. So that's why I'm, I'm drunk, not homeless, because that's what they were treating me like. like oh, you my can't just, God. You can't he just all rubs here. salt in the wound, and he's like, Larry, just think, when I get married to her, this will be a really funny story you can get, tell as a toast. Get married to her. <laughs> he wasn't unmarried already. They'll just oh. say, yeah, so. <laughs> anyway. Well, that that that's been divorced for probably oh, three that's decades, so but no. funny. and I love Andy. I said his whole name, and that's he'd be okay with. It. He's such a great dude. He really was a good man. I tell you stories offline about Andy, but Tia, uh, that was that was the homeless thing, and I, I've never been so mad. And I've had to pass out in a lot of weird places, dude. You know what I mean? Never in the back of a fucking neon, because that's not a big car. And I, I'm just I, like with all the clothes on. You know, yeah, right? I'm like the whole little brother in the Christmas story thing. Yeah. Or Chevy Chase in uh, Christmas when he's up in the attic and just putting all the oh, yeah. he can find. The little the old hat. Oh, the God. gloves. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, dude. I, mean, oh I had next God. to nothing. I passed out. And I, I, mean, I was out Good. Cold. You should. Oh, man. I was so, I was, it was bad. It was, You're lucky you know. he didn't wake up to like some, for real homeless guy, like trying yeah. to rob your basketball shorts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just mo- most of them, most of them been like, come on here, fucker. It's cold. I need some more heat. Right. Ah, I love you too. But not the butt. I get it, bro. Just, just warm me up. Breathe on my neck. It's I'm cold. Yeah, but no, it's. That was, if you that pee was, in a bottle and put it by your feet, oh, I'll keep man. your toes warm. Oh, man. <laughs> so bad. You know what? I, oh, God. But I didn't. I was passed out. So, right. I mean, but when I woke up, man, I mean, it was like. You remembered was, where yeah. you were, and you were just pissed. When they woke me up off the couch, <laughs> it took me a minute to be like, what's going on right now? You know what I mean? Like, your drunken mind is just, like, reeling. Like, the little yeah. men in there running like, I don't know where the fuck we parked. You know what I mean? We're somewhere. Searching, searching. We're somewhere. You know? <laughs> Here's a shock. The big guy got shit faced again, and now we're lost. <laughs> so that that's the oh, I'm God. drunk, not homeless. Because if a that cop would have showed up, I funny. was. Oh my God! So you'd horrible. have been screwed. I'd have been screwed. When you asked about uh, Diamond Cabaret, w- this reminded me of a little story. When we uh, it was our anniversary one year, and we were. Um, we were still like the our, our the girls now were little and we were on a budget you know all the kids were at home <clears throat> so i bought a groupon <laughs> <laughs> to diamond cabaret well, wait okay. <laughs> it went, all it said was a steak dinner and a cabernet show and it was a great deal and i was like heck yeah i'm buying this groupon 
And so I showed Carrie, like, so it came time, we got ready, and I said, well, okay, so this is where we're going. And he's like, is this Diamond Cabaret? And I was like, no, it is a steakhouse with just a Cabernet show. And he's like, are you sure? Because he's from there, you know. Well, sure, shit. We went to Google Maps and <laughs> took really? us to Got Diamond Cabernet. And they put us, like, on the runway where the strippers came down. And we were there at, like, 5 or 6 o'clock. <clears throat> and they brought our salads. And I'll never forget. I was eating my salad. And she comes prancing down the runway. And she's like, hey. <laughs> and I was just like, I'll have ranch. <laughs> <laughs> salad and she like sits down on the the runway and is watching us eat our salads and she like locks eyes with me and is doing her little dance and I was like eating my salad and Carrie's eating his salad and we're like dipping our bread in the <laughs> butter she sits down <laughs> spreads the legs and just stared me straight in the eyes and took her big stripper heels and went <laughs> <laughs> I was yep. like, I'll have my steak medium rare. <laughs> <laughs> Two more clicks, you can go home, Dorothy. <laughs> we have a st- she did that the whole time. Just stood there and would just look us in the eye and just... With their I am shocked that there was a group on the Diamond Cabaret. That's a nice ass place. I know. What's the champagne room, Andy asked? They're like, if you if you got to ask. You <laughs> yes. They had a stripper... Tell him on a dollar bill, you probably need it more than I do. She turned it away. Yes. Stop. People are throwing 20s on there, dude. I mean, there's guys just throwing cash to me. The little ghetto. Hey, take your welfare check and get the hell out of here, Trevor Price, you know? But yeah. yeah. It's Yeah, dude. It's it's. A, you ever been there, Adam? No. I've, I've been by. I've He's more of by. a Saturdays guy. Sure, the, only, Saturdays guy. the only strip club I've been to is the Hunt Club, which yeah. was in Fort Collins. Oh, boy. That's the only, only one I've ever been to. Really? Yeah. I've heard about the Hunt Club. So yeah, that's uh, that's uh, oh. I'm, not, I'm drunk, not homeless, man. So <laughs> okay, this could have been any Saturday night, though, for you. That's true. <laughs> I mean, I was like, I don't know. I just became more trained after <laughs> all. Like, I looked up the law, man. You can't kick me out. Bro. I'm squatting on the couch, I'm bitches. Educated. The thing he learned that night was know what room or what the name of the rooms yeah, under. But then again, that's happened to me before, not knowing what room we're in. So <laughs> room two hundred two. Yeah. Oh, uh, good story. Good okay. story. So then we got the last one, the human meth torch. Human meth torch. Wait a minute. We haven't done the normal. Uh, how are you feeling about the stories, Adam? Oh, yeah, he always asks me that. Yeah, and I hate asks when he us. asks. It's like, I don't know. There's a story. Yeah, know. yeah. But anyways, yeah, so what did you... I, I, see, the thing is, is I know I've heard part of that story, too. Mm. See, so with him like taking any. a true story and like turning stuff around or adding or whatever... Because I remember <laughs> he said that look. Mm, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so I've heard part of that story too. So, I don't know. I'm Okay. What do you think about it? I mean, I, please, for the love of all things, I have to have shitty roads be, be true because my heart can't take it. I mean, I'm drunk, not homeless. Like, I don't know. Like, dude, I've seen you. I feel like, again, this could be any Saturday night right. in the past. <clears throat> we'll see. Let, let's take it on home, Adam. Yep. So, the human meth torch. I'm going to tell a story, but I do have an extra story I'm going to tell. Not to pick from, but a bonus story. Just wait. How, what time are we at? We're one hour exactly. Oh, wow. Okay, we'll make it quick. So, the human meth torch. I grew up in Brush, Colorado, so when you grew up in a small town, we've all talked about this before, you don't know big city problems a lot, right? I lived with my aunt when I first lived down there in that little back room, my Aunt Ruth's house that my, her and my grandma had bought, we talked about earlier, and it had its own door in, and her back door was kind of at an L, right? It's in a bad part of town. It's on South Pueblo. They call it Bessemer. Minaqua now, but back in the day, they call it Bessemer. So I get home, and it's like 6 in the morning. The sun's coming up. I've been drinking all night. Once again, I'm shit-faced hammered, right? Huh, yeah. weird. But it was fun. Like I said, that was one of the funnest times of my life. It's it's one of the life I, I look back with such love, you know what I mean? Mm. Um, we'd always go out. We'd always go out and we'd, uh, we'd go party, like at someone's house, apartment, whatever, right? So I get back about 6 in the morning, right? It, I, I get dropped off and I go in there and I, I, am, I am drunk, drunk. And I go to lay down on the bed and I hear this explosion. Boom, there's just this big, huge boom. And it shakes this little back room, and I'm like, "What the shit?" So I kind of, st- I kind of stumble up, you know, and I, like it's like that twilight where you're gonna pass out <laughs> reality and passed out reality, right? Yeah. And I, I kind of go to the back door and I open it up and I look, 
and I see this guy on her, our back lawn because my it was an open back lawn. There was like small, like wire fence around most some of it. He's on fire, and this dude is rolling around. Oh shit! <laughs> the other guy is now running down the street on fire. Oh, there's two. On there's fire? two. Of them. There's two. Of them. The one stopped, jumped, and roll. The one's freaking out and running. I'm drunk. I'd like to scream advice to him, right? <laughs> like, you know, like, do something, Larry. My little auntie comes out. This is my great aunt, by the way, my grandmother's sister. And she goes, Moosey, call the police. Call the police. I mean, you call the police, you know? <laughs> this dude's on fire. And I'm thinking, is he on fire? Is he that fast? Because this son bitch is moving, right? <laughs> so, or is he that fast? Yeah, dude. There's flames on the son of a bitch, right? And my little devil, my little angel, my angel's like, be a hero, Larry. And the devil's like, bitch, please. Like, Come on. You know? When else are you going to ever yeah, see this yeah. again? You'll, Let it go. You'll never see Larry run down a black guy. You're just not going to happen. Okay. So two guys from the neighborhood, this is early in the morning, right? They tackle the dude. They're slapping him to get it out. Sure. People, people around the houses, the houses around that, it's, okay, let me take a step back. There was the house next to my aunt. And in the back, they had like a, it looked like those sheds you see at Home Depot that are two stories. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was like a, a mother-in-law house, I guess. Right, right, right. That's right. where the meth lab was that exploded. <laughs> right? So all these neighbors are out there to have their garden hoses out just washing their house or just wetting it down so it doesn't catch on fire. This is like a Tuesday in Pueblo. Oh, my God. Right? <laughs> Spray their shit down so their meth, meth lab don't right. go yeah. up exactly. in flames. Exactly. When the flash runs by. Too much ammonia, rookie. You know? <laughs> so... They're, they're hosing their house down, and the only words that come out of my mouth are, oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, <laughs> shit. Like, I have never seen anything like this in my life, right? So the cops show up, right? It's a big deal. They evacuate the houses. It's Pueblo in summer, so it's 110 degrees in the afternoon, right? So Minnequa Park is across the street. I have to sit there and lay in that damn lawn. As my aunt's telling news reporters, I think it was a bomb, you know? <laughs> The cop comes to talk to me, right? And I, dude, he had to smell me from 50 paces because I've been drinking Yukon Jack oh like I have the last bottle on earth. You know? <laughs> Where, was it Yukon Do It? <laughs> you can Do It, yeah. <laughs> and by that, I mean not shut up. So he sits down, he's asking me, and I'm, I'm, I'm still, you know, how you say you're a little drunk. I was a lot drunk, yeah. right? So this detective was talking to me about it, and I'm like, I don't know, this explosion, and then this black guy on fire, you know. And when they could put the guy out, by the way, it was like you could see the pink spots. Oh, where the skin had was burned. he screaming? D- yeah, Dennis, he was on fire running, you know. <laughs> so, well, meth might do crazy things to people. I don't know if he was on it, but he was still making the ship uh, incorrectly, obviously. Incorrectly. So yeah, man, and uh, how this story ends is that detective came back to the house like two days later, you know, and, and interviewed me, and finally he's like. Oh, that's nice. He, he, he don't slur for. I, I didn't know if you're special or not. He's probably thinking, you know. But yeah, it, it was the craziest shit I ever seen in my life, man. Oh, did the guy live? Like everything's I have, okay? I have no idea, man. I'm not sure. It was that house next door was a it was a shithole. It was <laughs> people in and out of it all the time. They never had regular people. There was never a family in there. It was always some sketchy shit. But they never, they never messed with my great aunt. Huh. She just never. I feel like in those neighborhoods, there's a sense of like respect. Yeah, I think you so. Know? They just yeah. they never messed with her. And some of the older people on that block there was vidge across the street they called the mayor of bessemer because he always had his nose and everybody's shit you know <laughs> but they never messed with my aunt ruth you know well she was a tough old mexican my grandmother's sister but they, they, she'll cut you man she's not she don't play you know <laughs> she got jesus on her side but she'll call him you your know? stories from pueblo i've never i don't know if i've ever like i maybe drove through i've never stayed but i kind of like want to just keep driving through <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if i ever need to stay well, Pueblo's That's a good call <laughs> pueblo like when i'm growing up in holly in southeast colorado Pueblo was the big city we went to to go. It was like your Greeley. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was like two and a half hours away. That's like the closest Walmart forever. Pueblo? Yeah. yeah. My, my grandmas like, call it Pablo. Pablo. It's my grandfather. Yeah. What Pueblo. do you call it? You call it Pueblo. Pueblo. Pueblo, yeah. Pueblo. But yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, that was crazy, man. It was I'd never seen like that in my life. And to take that while well, hammered, that's 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 something that's hard to Good thing you weren't on drugs. Could you oh, imagine man. how trippy that would have been? Oh, <laughs> like <God>. shit. <laughs> shit. Yeah, it was nuts, man. So yeah. Wow. wow. So okay. All right. This is gonna be fun. See, so now I've never I don't think I've ever heard that story. So that's got me thinking that's the one. But I don't I don't know. <clears throat> so but anyways. So like we always do. Mm-hmm. The rock, paper, scissors. Dents and I have never actually faced off. <laughs> we haven't, uh, have we? This is a first. This is so. a first, but we're both four pumpers. Yeah, but he's the three. Go four. I, I'll respect the four. Okay. 
I'm just so, so happy I found Paula. She's a three pump. I know. <laughs> Look right, me in the ready? ice. Ready? Yep. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Dang it. I finally won something. <laughs> I even was I'm like, back, don't do baby. paper. Don't do paper. Don't do, because I always do paper. Um, so I go first? You go first. Okay. Dude, I'm drunk, not homeless. Sometimes shitty. Oh, first, let me just say, sometimes shitty roads lead to great places. Yes, true. A hundred percent, because my heart can't take it to not be true. <laughs> um, the human meth torch. Dude, I'm drunk, not drunk. Um, I, I feel like I am going to go with the human meth torch because, dude, I'm drunk, not homeless. Like, there was just so many details in it, and... Um, the strippers, the guy leading up to it, how you got the tickets. Um, the part about you being drunk sounds true, but you were drunk <laughs> in the other one, so. Technically, not, not, not. I think I think I'm going with that. Okay. So Adam? you are going with the human meth torch. I am. See, like I said, I've never heard. I don't think I've ever heard that story. The um, sometimes shitty roads lead to great places. I've heard bits and pieces of that, um, just not everything together. And then, dude, I'm drunk, not homeless. I've heard part of that story, too, about you going to Diamond Cabaret, the football game. I know you had a knee on. Mm-hmm. So this is this, uh, mm-hmm. this sucks. Um, I'm going to go with, and is going to kill me, but I just mm-hmm. have a feeling that there's something in sometimes shitty roads lead to great places. Uh-oh. There's something in there that's been changed or that's not quite accurate. So that's what I'm going with. Oh, my God. So. So that's your final? Yep, that's my final. And yours is the human meth torch? Yes. Let me tell you this. What I've done while telling these stories, you're sticking with those, right? Yes. You you do follow eye contact a lot. You follow. You, you're very visual when you pick your stuff. You're very audio. You're, you you always say, I feel like, so you, maybe it's a man and woman thing, uh-huh. you always listen to the story, and you really do shoot from the you from your gut. You watch people's eye contact, that's what you pay attention to. So I am happy to say. <gasps> Dude, I'm drunk. No. What? <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, you so said. you got both of us. So, dude, wow. I'm drunk, not homeless. The part with Butch is true. I hope you're still around, Butch, and I, I hope you're doing well, buddy. Good old man. The part about going to the Bronco game, the Al Wilson, all true. And he never stared at him, never met a chick, never went back to the hotel room, never slept in my car. Andy and I went to the Diamond Cabaret. He did get that. You need that more than I do, dollar. That's when we said, fucking, let's leave. Al Wilson was there. We went back to the hotel. We never went to another bar because we were almost broke at that point. <laughs> We had a beer, passed out, woke up, oh. drove back to Pueblo. You wow. asshole. Wow. Um, sometimes share your loads lead to great places. That's the story I, I was I, I didn't want to get through uh, telling, but it is a story. It, it's a it's a story that has impacted my life very much. You know what I mean? And yeah. it's, it's something I have not told a lot of people, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, Patty's probably heard it and some, you know, people I've dated or whatever. Um, but that is a that is a very true story, all every every ounce of it. Um and uh, and I I do, and it it's a story. I hope I hope Christy watches this, you know, because I do love yeah. her. I love you, you know, and she yeah. is someone who's very important in my life. You know, what I mean, Aww. to this day, um, the human meth torch is a hundred percent true. Also, that dude was on fire. As a matter <laughs> of fact, when I before I met Wade Ridley, I had met him in Pueblo. I knew I knew Wade Ridley. He had a podcast called Seven One Nine The Block. Seven One Nine Pueblo's area, area code. code. Him and Liz Benfield, I believe, were on a podcast talking about the meth lab that grew, blew up across the street from the, the pool that they were both lifeguards at. And I listened, I'm like, I was the guy, <laughs> you know? And when I saw Wade, I'm like, that story, I lived in that greenhouse, man, in that back room. He's like, it was crazy, because he came to the, the swim class or whatever, and the, the house is on fire and shit. But yeah, that's a true story. I've heard of meth houses blowing up. I've mm-hmm. never actually seen it. This thing was on fire. I mean, it. yeah, there was glass and shit everywhere, oh, dude. This, this thing, boom, boom, oh, man. So that's, that's a true story, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, he beat us. Wow. So, Good job. But here's the other thing that I just thought of. Dincia is 0-2 against the hosts <laughs> of the Bullhucker. That's true. <laughs> okay, rub it in. Yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. I, I hey, just... i got to look for a win any way I can here. Yeah. <laughs> and I didn't win. 
in rock, paper, scissors, I suck. I suck all around. Oh, my gosh. So if I can't tell a quick story. Let's hear it. I promised. I, you never heard my bull, ho- my bull, bull Budweiser? Which one? I don't know. <laughs> the one where I had to pull over and do something bad in the bay. Okay, so I've this is the story I said times. I would tell on my 50th. This is this is technically the story I'd t- love to tell. This is my goat story for Carrie. Okay, so okay. Are, so I'll make this as quick as possible. Adam's heard this a dozen times because he's actually part of the story. He used to work for Budweiser. That's where him and I met. Pre-trip in trucks. You're supposed to pre-trip your truck, blah, 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 whatever. I got my truck back. They fixed it or whatever was wrong with the engine. So I was driving out to Ray, Colorado, right? I got a shit so bad. <laughs> Dance, yeah, I'm, out, so I'm probably 10 miles outside of Yuma. I'm doing the shit math. It's like, where can I pull this in? <laughs> get out, hit a toilet as soon as possible. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. So. A field is off limits. Well, it is because they just harvest, so the, the, everything's about that tall. Okay. <laughs> driving, driving, and then I'm, my, my white knuckling it, man. All of a sudden, <laughs> the dash lights up, man. The truck, <laughs> I thought that was your butt. The truck, <laughs> the truck was shutting down. <laughs> so I yanked this truck to the side of the road, man. And it dies. It just dies. <laughs> oh, no. But I didn't pre-trip it like I was supposed to. So I, I was like, did I miss something? Is this on me? I start to panic, and adrenaline hits me. Now, adrenaline will stop you from pooping. I, it'll, <laughs> it'll, 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 it'll stop for a minute, right? So I get out. I kick the, the hood open, and I'm like, shit. I don't, I don't know what's wrong. I can't see what's wrong, right? It turned out that when they put it back together, they did it wrong. Whoever fixed it did it wrong, right? Yeah. I don't know that. So I call my boss, Rick, and he's like, you idiot. I'm like, I don't know what I did. He goes, all right, I'll call you back. He called him back. He's like, they're going to come fix it. There's nobody in Sterling. They're coming out of Evans to fix it. Oh, shit. Three hours away. <laughs> and that's when my butt said, <laughs> <laughs> that's not going to work, champ. You know? So that's when panic sets in. I mean, panic. Like, I'm just like, okay, all right, all right, all right, MacGyver. So... I have a water bottle and like four napkins to do business with. Okay, this is this is what this is what God has sent me in my life. This is what's gonna happen. So I I start looking like I don't know what to do. I it's the one with the base, the whip up on the side. You've seen those yeah. delivery trucks where you have to open the, all the doors. Uh huh. I find one that's empty. Thank you, Jesus. So I take a case of Budweiser, empty it out, and then make myself a little makeshift toilet. Right in the bay. Yeah, I, I put it in the bay and then I climb in and then I close it a little bit. Right, so now I have a little light in there. And I'm pressed up against this, not like, okay, this is going to be quick. And I hear someone go, hello? <laughs> hello? <laughs> I had forgotten about that part. <laughs> and I go, no. <laughs> <laughs> You'd rather be caught with a dead hooker in your home <laughs> than someone catch you shitting in the back of a truck or shitting your pants. Okay? Oh, God. So, hello, hello. And I just kind of like, I'm good. I scream. And <laughs> people aren't pulling over to see if I'm okay. They're pulling over to see if there's a beer truck unattended. That's oh, what they're doing, yeah. right? I mean, because they will rob you in a beer truck. They don't give a shit. I'm sh- so, <laughs> so he leaves, right? And I, I mean, I, I power this one out, man. It, it's, I don't have to power. I don't have to try. Just open up, buddy. <laughs> I get out. I've missed the box. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's half true. I got half in the box, half outside. I don't know how I did that. It was a little dark in there. And I don't... It's so steamy. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's so, so, so I clean up as much as I can, right? But with three napkins and a bottle of water, there's only so much you can do, right? You got screechers. Bad, dude. My hands, my hands I can smell. <laughs> So I, I kind of just waddle out. I get back in the driver's side, and I look just like the hundred mile stare, just like, <laughs> oh god, right? The poor guy comes out to clean it or not to uh, fix the truck. From he fixes, he, he gets it back to running. You know. He goes, do you smell and, something? Well, no. Do, do no. you have some diesel in there? I can wash my hands. With. <laughs> he goes. He, he's telling me here's what happened. I'm like, I, it, great man, whatever. Is it gonna run? Yeah. He goes, puts his hand. He goes, you're well, there. You go, buddy. And I was like, oh fuck. <laughs> so I shake his hand. I'm like. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. So, oh, I, dude, it's the worst <laughs> trip to Ray. I got to drive to Ray. Well, Sparky, uh, our friend who was the salesman there, since I had such a late start, since I was parked there for five hours or whatever it was, he they sent Sparky to come help me because now I'm five hours behind. Yeah. Him. I pull up behind in the, the, the little uh, the storefront there in Ray, the little mall, the shopping mall they have there. In the back, you pull <laughs> up, right? I pull up and I'm whipping over the bays and get ready to unload it right. Me and my itchy ass, and uh, Sparky pulls up. You know what I mean? In, in the little bud van, he's got a big gulp. 
you know, and he's like, you want a drink of this? And I go, what is it? He's like, I peed in it, you know, because on the way he just <laughs> pissed as he was going, right? And so he had, a, he had a cup full of pee, and he's like, I oh peed God. in it. I go, yeah? What, what are you people? I'll, I'll see your big gulp. I said, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's exactly what happened. He goes, I peed in it. I go, yeah, you know what? I can beat that. <laughs> so I whip up in that bay, and it's one of those times in life but the only time I've had a friend really look at me and question <laughs> Who I was. Like, he goes, What are you, fucking homeless? <laughs> no, I just drunk. drunk. <laughs> like, Dude, yeah. I was like, Yeah, it goes so bad. Like, you know what I mean? So he's like, Okay, stop. We got to go to a truck wash or something. I'm like, we, There's no time. These stores are going, We got to get this shit in there. So <laughs> I try to wash some of it out, right? There's oh no washing God. Bigler shit stank out of that truck. Oh, my God. <laughs> so that poor guy, I don't even warn the warehouse guy. He whips up, he's like, <laughs> <laughs> the beer's gone bad. I feel like the beer would even taste, you know, if it's in so many farts when you're like in front of you, yeah. you can taste it. I feel like that would have been the, that beer. Yeah. He'd be like. <laughs> Shameful. <laughs> yeah, New meaning funny? to bitty, bitter beer face. <laughs> yes. So that was their slogan was crisp, clean, refreshing. <laughs> what, what bay was that in, Adam? It was the clean bay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that clean right across it. I'm like, don't open that son of a bitch. You made someone else clean it out. Well, I tried to clean it out. The smell was there. It you was, savage. It was smell was there. What am I You're like, I was out? grossed out. I wasn't oh, going to touch it. And it was the tequila shit. I already again, touched it like, once. Man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. So that's my Budweiser poop story. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, I, you know, I'm picturing it, too, and I can smell yeah, it. Don't, like, don't do that. Yeah, that's it's <laughs> just so bad. So bad. Yeah, so, oh, God. And, anyway, we better wrap this up. It's, a, it's been a long yeah, one. So. This is a longer it's been one, fun. but it's, it's been, been fun. fun. Congrats on 50. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, it's been fun. So hope we uh, make it to 100. We'll see you guys to do that one. Let's so. do it. So yeah. maybe that could be the drunk episode. Yeah, yeah. Can we? All right. Okay. I'm in. You guys heard it. You gotta keep. You gotta keep us around for fifty more episodes. 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 We'll do the bull drunker. Yes. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. Okay. All right, All right. All right guys. So, uh, thanks again to Paula at Rebel Girl for letting us uh, set up here and record. You know, and like we said, follow us on Facebook or what are we on? Facebook, TikTok, TikTok. Instagram, everything, man. We're everywhere. Um, and uh, what was I going to say? I don't know. Thanks for joining us. I'm Adam Vokey. I'm Dinsey Kudrin. And I'm Moose Lundstrom. Thanks, guys. Peace. Peace.